Today we will talk about the designing of combinational logic circuits. We will try to differentiate between static CMOS circuits and dynamic CMOS circuits. I am Dr. Imran Khan. For more videos and technology updates, please subscribe our channel. If you have any question related to our video, please don't hesitate to contact me. Combinational versus sequential logic. In combinational logic circuits, output is dependent only on the previous inputs. Output is the function of previous inputs only. While in the sequential logic circuit, output is dependent not only on the previous inputs but also the states of uh, energy storage elements. So the output is the function of inputs and previous inputs. These uh, previous inputs are the states of these state storage elements like uh, flip-flop, latches and registers. So in sequential uh, logic circuits, uh, the, the state storage elements like uh, flip-flop, latches and registers are involved. Static CMOS circuits. At every point in time, each gate, gate output is connected to either VDD or VSS via a low resistive path. The outputs of gate assumes all the time the value of boolean function implemented by the circuit ignoring once again the transient effect during switching periods. In static CMOS circuits, either th there is no or negligible power consumption. In static CMOS circuits, there are la large noise margins to implement n number of inputs in static CMOS circuits we need 2n number of transistors. Suppose if we have two inputs we will require four transistors to implement uh, this function and suppose we have five inputs we will require 10 transistors to implement the function. So this is uh, the standard uh, procedure to implement static complementary CMOS circuits. So this PUN is the pull-up network PDN is pull down network. So these are inputs and uh, here is the output. This is VDD and this is ground. So in pull up network we will use P MOS transistors only. In pull down network we will use N MOS transistors only. Pull up network and pull down network are the dual logic networks. So in pull up network we will use PMOS transistors only. So here you can see this is the pull-up network and we have connected this PMOS transistor with, uh, with VTD and this PMOS transistor is connecting VTD to this output capacitor CL. So when we apply low gate voltage this transistor will turn on and it will connect this VTD to uh, this output capacitor and it will charge the, this output capacitor from 0 to VDD. And suppose if we connect uh, N MOS transistor in the pull up network, then what will happen? It will charge the output capacitor from VDD to VDD minus V uh, from 0 to VDD minus VTN. So you can see that there is the voltage drop of 1 VTN. So this VTN is the threshold voltage for N MOS transistor. So uh, that's why we use P MOS transistor only in the pull up network. Similarly in the pull down network we use N MOS transistors. So you can see. So when we connect uh, this uh, gate voltage to high signal this N MOS transistor will turn on and it will discharge this output capacitor from VDD to zero. But when we will connect this P MOS transistor, so uh, you can see still one threshold voltage will left in this capacitor. So uh, these P MOS transistors pass strong ones and weak zeros and N MOS transistors pass strong zeros and weak ones. So this is the reason that we use P MOS transistor in the pull up network and N MOS transistors in the pull down network. 
so here is the C switch we can use uh, we can uh, use C switch to uh, get strong 0 and strong 1 at the same time so here you can see this is the block level diagram and this is uh, the circuit level diagram of a C switch so uh, in this diagram we have connected a P MOS transistor and N MOS transistor to implement our C switch this C, C switch can pass good 0 or good 1 at the same time so let's discuss about the implementation of this complex function so here you can see this is the output and the out, uh, we want to implement this function a b plus c d prime so first of all we will start construction of our pull down network a b are in series so here you can see in the pull down network they are in series similarly c and d are in series so you can see c and d are in series and a b combination and c d combination they are in parallel to each other so you can see a b and c d combination is parallel to each other in the pull down network so in the pull down network we have used only n mos transistors so similarly in the pull up network uh, this a a b were in series in pull down network they will come in parallel so here you can see a and b are in parallel but with p mos transistors similarly c and d were in series in pull down network and in pull up network they will come in parallel so here you can see they are in parallel so similarly this whole combination is in series uh, this a b and c d now they are in series in the pull up network so here you can connect this vdd and here you can connect uh, the ground so here you can get the output so th this is uh, the standard procedure of implementation of any uh, complex combinational uh, circuit so this is uh, the transistor level diagram and uh, this is the block level diagram so let's discuss another example suppose we want to implement this function a b plus c into d whole prime so you can see that first of all we will uh, start construction of our pull down network and we will use uh, n mos transistors here so a b and c are in parallel so you can see here and uh, this whole combination is in series with d in the pull down network so similarly in the pull up network a b and c will come in series and this whole combination will come in parallel with d transistor so uh, here you can see we have used uh, n mos transistor in our pull down network and p mos transistor in our pull up network so here we can uh, discuss another example suppose we have this uh, function d plus a into b c whole prime so we want to implement this function so let's start uh, with pull down network first so uh, B and C now you can see B and C they are in parallel so you can see here in the pull down network they are in parallel and uh, this BC combination is in series with transistor A so here you can see uh, a transistor A is in series with the combination of BC and then now uh, this whole combination is in parallel with D so you can see uh, this whole combination is in parallel with transistor D so we have used uh, n MOS transistor in our pull down network so here you can get the output and uh, so this is your pull up network so now you can see B and C transistors were uh, in parallel in pull down network but in pull up network they will come in series so similarly this A transistor was uh, uh, in series with the combination of BC now it will come in parallel but with P MOS transistor in pull up network so similarly uh, this D, D transistor is in series with the, this whole combination so we have used uh, N MOS transistor in our pull down network and P MOS transistor in our pull up network so here you can connect the VDD and here you can connect ground and from here you can get your output so this is uh, the standard uh, 
procedure of uh, implementation of any static uh, CMOS circuit. So here you can see we have uh, uh, basically four inputs here and uh, uh, we need uh, eight number of transistors to implement this function. So now you can see that uh, for n input we need two n number of transistors to implement static uh, CMOS uh, functions. So let's discuss the multiplexer. So um, multiplexer in multiplexer, uh, we can uh, basically select several input line to a single output line. So this is uh, the standard uh, diagram of our multiplexer block level diagram. So this is the select line. These are input and this is output. So you, you can see there are several inputs, but only one output. So multi, what multiplexer do? It select one uh, input line uh, to single output line. So we can have uh, several inputs, but only one output. So it, it will basically select one uh, uh, input for the output. So here you can see we can implement uh, uh, this multiplexer by using these C switches. So here you can see this is, uh, uh, we have used two C switches to implement our simple multiplexer. So this is a two into one multiplexer. So dynamic CMOS. In static circuit at every point in time, the output is connected to either ground or VDD via low resistor path. So we need, uh, uh, 2n number of transistors to implement n number of uh, inputs. So n uh, basically this uh, n n type and n p type. So suppose we have uh, two inputs here, then we will need two n type and two p type transistors to implement this function. So basically for the two inputs, we need four transistor and suppose we have uh, five inputs, then we will require 10 transistors to implement the function. So in dynamic circuits, basically what will happen, we will require only N plus two transistors. Okay. So suppose uh, we have uh, five inputs, then we will require seven transistors to implement this function. So the number of transistors reduced in the dynamic CMOS. So for efficient designing, we need to uh, keep less number of transistors. So this is one example of dynamic gate. So this is uh, uh, the standard procedure. So here you can see uh, we have uh, use this PMOS transistor as uh, this is uh, the called the pre-charge and here we have used this uh, uh, NMOS transistor for evaluate function. So uh, here is your uh, PDN pulled on network and this is the output capacitor. So these are the inputs. So to implement our function, we, we will require only this PDN or pull down network. So this is uh, uh, basically the clock. So here uh, we have used this uh, two transistor, one PMOS and one NMOS for our pre-charge and evaluate function. So what will happen when the clock will be zero, uh, this transistor will turn on and this turn, uh, transistor will turn off and it will pre-charge uh, the output. And when the clock will be one, it will turn off and it will turn on and your output capacitor will discharge uh, this way. So this is uh, the standard procedure of uh, implementation of uh, dynamic logic. So here uh, you can see we have, uh, uh, you can see we have this function here a b plus c prime so here you can see a b a are in series and uh, this a b 
combination is in parallel with transistor C so this is uh, here you can see this is uh, the scenario and this is your uh, pre-charge and this is the value at transistor so you now you can see now we have uh, uh, three inputs and we require five transistors basically n plus two transistor uh, transistors to implement the function so uh, compared to static uh, CMOS circuits the number of transistors is uh, reduced in the uh, uh, dynamic uh, CMOS logic so conditions on the output once the output of a dynamic gate is discharged it cannot be charged again until the next pre-charge operation inputs to the gate can make at most one transition during the evaluation output can be in high impedance state during and after evaluation and your pull down network off state is stored on CL capacitor so logic function is implemented by pull down network only so uh, for uh, n number of inputs we need n plus 2 transistors to implement the function in our dynamic CMOS logic so in dynamic CMOS logic we have uh, full swing outputs from ground to VDD so these uh, dynamic gates are non-ratioed it means that the sizing of the devices doesn't affect the logic level so dynamic uh, gates are faster uh, in switching speeds so, uh, obviously the power uh, dissipation in uh, dynamic CMOS logic is higher than the static CMOS so uh, and also we need a pre-charge and evaluate clock in our dynamic gates so this was uh, the lecture for today and uh, please uh, if you have any question please don't hesitate to contact me so thank you very much for today see you next time